Hi Indie Warriors, Literary Rose here from I Dream of Indie with a review of Biota on the PC. Biota is a single-player 2D metroidvania action platformer, developed by Small Bros and published by Retrovibe. In this game, you're part of a team of mercenaries sent by a company with a monopolistic hold over a new energy source to investigate a mining colony infected by an alien plague. Think Aliens meets Riddick, if you're familiar with those titles. You have eight different playable characters with weapons that range from a submachine gun to a sniper rifle to a ray gun. Two of these characters are unlocked during your run as a part of the story, and two others are only unlockable after beating the game. The characters are what you would expect of mercenary types, fun and serviceable, since the true delight of the game is the visuals, the sound design, and of course, the gameplay. Iota immediately earned points with me simply due to nostalgia, as it reminded me of the first video game I ever played, Metroid on the NES. But this game does more than just evoke a nostalgia. It is a unique game of its own that takes a fun twist on a common sci-fi plot. Biota offers three different modes to play, story, arcade, and time trials. The majority of my experience with the game was in story mode, which offers two different endings. I also played around with the arcade and time trial modes, but I can't offer too much feedback on that as I'm not an expert in these modes, they don't often appeal to me. You have keyboard and controller support. I opted to use a controller, specifically an Xbox controller, which worked perfectly. Your movement is smooth and fluid, making platforming satisfyingly fast-paced and encouraging an almost speedrun-like style of playing. Your shooting in the game is equally well done, and each character's weapons brings a unique twist to your gameplay experience. My personal favorite was Zed, who wielded a shotgun and a somewhat OP bubble shield, in my opinion. Besides the standard Metroidvania gameplay of navigating winding maps. You also have segments where you take control of a mech, a submarine, and a starship. While I was not getting tired of the gameplay, these segments added a lovely layer and kept me even more engaged than before. This game should run easily even on the most potato of PCs. The options offer nine different languages, low or high definition color rendering, and varying degrees of CRT visual effect as well as screen shake. I kept these features off, but it's always good to have options. I also really appreciated the developer's epilepsy warning at the start of the game, so if this is a concern for you, this may be a title to skip. In terms of difficulty, I would say this is a little on the easier side. Granted, the last game I played was a Souls-like, so perhaps take this with a grain of salt. The only parts of the game that I felt the difficulty spike were with one particular boss battle and the final sequence of the game. The map was easy to navigate for the most part, with clear paths to follow. Even the winding paths were fairly simple to remember and traverse. Panning across the map felt tedious and it took ages, so at some point I opted for ignoring it and just going off of my mental map. One nifty feature of the map are the icons signaling whether you have acquired the key item from the area's shop or not. This was incredibly useful in saving time from backtracking. You also have a very convenient teleport system. You can teleport to the surface HQ at any point through your inventory, which is very useful when your HP starts to run low since the main health station is on the ground level. This also allows you to to switch characters at your leisure, which I highly recommend in order to see which matches your playstyle best. Each area on the map also has their own dedicated teleport to the start of it, which again helps immensely in avoiding excessive backtracking. One feature I loved was the manual save option, which you can activate using the options button on the controller at almost any point on the map. If you are in a room with enemies though, just be sure to clear them from the screen first, otherwise you won't be able to save. I did run into one bug related to this feature, which I would consider more of a freak accident. As I died to an enemy, the Kingdom Hearts player 
leapt out of my hands and began to button mash. And I just so happened to hit the manual save button, which in this specific circumstance actually worked. So every time I went to reload, I would return to my death and be prompted to reload again or quit. Thankfully, the developers were kind enough to provide me with another save state closer to where I left off in the game. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> the visuals follow a retro 8-bit console style, with over 54 unique 4 color palettes to swap. To start, however, you only have 24. The rest you can find on the map while following the story. Some are very obvious, and others are more of a challenge to reach or even find. I do have to say though, the visuals are a bit hard for me to look at. This is of no fault of the developers and artists, but I would argue that the 8-bit style can be a bit rough on the eyes. I found myself frequently switching the color palettes, not so much for fun as to find a combination that felt easier to look at. It was especially difficult to read the dialogue, and I often skimmed over these parts. Finally, let's talk about the soundtrack which is absolutely gorgeous. I've never been huge on chiptune or synthwave, but this game definitely has me changing my tune. <laughs> I'm sorry, but not really. <laughs> the soundtrack is absolutely spectacular and encouraged me to keep going with its hypnotic beat. At first, I will say I was a bit disappointed because it definitely wasn't the spooks of the Metroid soundtrack, but I quickly realized that this was a very different and still amazing composition. I can definitely see myself listening to this in my spare time, especially while exercising. My head was bobbing to the beat almost the entire time playing, and I don't often notice the music when I play, so I would consider that a big plus. My only major gripe is the boss fight with the fleshy monster, <laughs> which is a pretty early boss fight, and the final escape sequence. I won't spoil, but I felt these sections were tedious compared to the fast pace of the rest of the game, especially that final escape sequence where I honestly almost quit before reaching the ending because of how annoyed I was. In my opinion, I would say that sequence could be cut in half and still have that same cinematic effect. If it wasn't evident yet, I enjoyed Biota immensely. Everything about this game is polished and an absolute pleasure to play. This game is full of addictive combat, fun exploration, and a stellar soundtrack. I highly recommend playing Biota. For now, thank you so much for watching. I'd like to give a special thank you to all of the great indie warriors and indie legends that continue to provide their patronage for this channel. At the indie warrior level, we have Bill T, Christian Cruz, Cavalo, Adriana Amato, CJR, PSC, Julian Colts, Jesse, Ray Lynn, Marky Mint, Dave Hart, Peekaboo, Lex Noyle, Carmine Red, King of the Hatch, and Blue Francis 4. At the indie legends level, we have Jen Rose, Larkison, Mitchell Hall, Eric Peach, Skeptism, C Coil, Nathan Moore, Chris Jackson, and Mr. W. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any reviews or gameplay impressions. Check out the description box to see how you can become an indie warrior yourself. Help us bring a voice to the voiceless ones in gaming.